Since almost every Warframe player has just acquired a Gara Prime courtesy of TennoCon 2023, I thought now would be a great time to release a brand new Gara video. While my old Nourish build still stands at the forefront of maximizing her DPS, we can utilize a lot of brand new tech from more recent updates to push her even farther. Gara is quite intricate and offers a remarkable amount of depth, so let's explore each one of her abilities and if you're looking to skip around, you'll find timestamps in the description as for now, we will focus on the core aspects of her abilities solely. Starting off with Shattered Lash, which may be the most confusing of them all as it is considered a pseudo exalted ability. Pseudo exalted abilities are unique in that they cannot be modded directly like traditional exalted weapons. Instead, these abilities inherit the mods used on your currently equipped melee weapon, but more importantly, they completely ignore the melee's base stats. This means you can use any single melee weapon with the same mods and you will see the same damage on your Shattered Lash. Do note that melees used to buff abilities are commonly referred to as stat sticks. Lash has two distinct modes, tap and hold. Tapping causes Gara to thrust her sword forward, dealing puncture damage and pushing enemies within a 0.75 meter radius back, while on the other hand, holding the ability key down will instead have her sweep her sword from the left to right in a 225 degree angle, dealing slash damage and ragdolling all enemies on hit. Because the slash version hits significantly more enemies in a single cast, it will be the only version that I continue talking about. To opt for the slash hit by tapping instead of the forward thrust, head to your settings, locate Invert Tap Hold abilities, and switch Gara from default to Inverted, allowing you to tap for the Slash Arc. Lash boasts innate infinite punch through, piercing through enemies, obstacles, and even walls, Gara's own Mass Vitrify included. While I did state that pseudo exalted weapons inherit the stats of your melee weapons equipped mods, they still have their own base stats that aren't shown anywhere for whatever reason. Rather unfortunately, Lash has a 0% crit and status chance with only a 1x multiplier. In the past, this was extremely limiting for Lash DPS builds, normally having to resort to things like Arcane Avenger for flat crit chance, but as stated previously, there is now a much better way to get around this limitation which I will show later. The damage of Lash is affected by other things than your melee mods, that being ability strength, the melee combo counter, and certain arcanes. The damage calculation equation is as follows with no one stat taking precedence over another, simply aim to maximize with the highest values available. A key distinction here is that IPS mods, unlike in regular melee weapons, do benefit Lash's damage with Puncture or Slash enhancing their respective counterparts damage. For instance, plus Puncture mods do not work on the Slash arc and vice versa. Given its pseudo exalted nature, the combo counter will boost Slash's damage incrementally, giving a 0.25x increase in damage per combo counter, capping off at 3.75x for 12x combo. Venka Prime can hit 13x combo, increasing this multiplier to 4x, but it is less than favorable for our stat stick for many reasons. We will come back to Lash later, as there is a lot more it does for Gara, but for now, let's move on to her next ability, Splinter Storm. Splinter Storm is both Gara's best defensive and offensive tool. You can cast this on most everything in the entire game, yourself, allies, enemies, defense objects, etc etc. Doing so on yourself will encircle Gara in glass shards while displaying a counter above your weapons HUD showing you your current damage. If you walk nearby enemies now, you will push them away while dealing the said damage divided between the IPS stats. You can apply this same effect by casting on enemies, weakening them with a 35% vulnerability to weapon and ability damage, though their individual splinter storms will not accumulate damage as Gara's does. Speaking of accumulating damage, while splinter storm is active, shattering Gara's fourth mass vitrify with her lash will cause the damage to be redirected towards enemies, but mainly back into your own storm at 50%. This is a source of infinite damage that allows you to simply walk nearby enemies and kill them, no aiming required, as this does not have a cap. Past the insane damage capabilities of Storm, while casted on yourself, you gain a base 70% damage resist, capping out at 90% at 129% strength. Again, we're not done with Splinter Storm, but in the essence of time, let's move on to Gara's third, Spectral Rage. Now, we actually swapped this out for, you guessed it, Nourish. Spectral Rage is good, but on Gara specifically, with the augment, it is just too slow for her insane energy consumption, and Nourish fits in amazingly here with every aspect of the ability buffing her kit. The viral damage granted enhances our stat stick, 
thereby boosting Lash's damage, while the Viral Retaliation Wave will send out a single stack of Viral on all nearby enemies when taking damage, which universally buffs every single source of damage here. The Energy Multiplier proves to be very invaluable here considering Gara's substantial energy consumption. This frees up not only our Focus School from Xenoric, but also an Arcane slot from Energize. Finally, coming to her last ability and arguably what ties her entire kit together, we have Mass Vitrify. Upon casting Vitrify, Gara will immediately become invulnerable as she conjures a wall of molten glass, which will expand outwards and downwards if the space permits it. As the wall expands, enemies coming into contact with it will gradually crystallize within 3 seconds, leading to a 50% debuff for weapon and ability damage. Crystallized enemies do enhance the final HP of the solidified glass wall, though you'll find this seldomly exploited as striking Vitrify with Lash triggers an explosion dealing Lash's damage to all enemies in range, coupled with 800 base damage from the wall itself. This function bolsters the quote unquote nuke Gara builds as casting Vitrify to promptly break it with Lash is favorable. Furthermore, casting Vitrify will renew the duration on Splinterstorm, and of course breaking it does add to Splinterstorm's infinite damage cap. Diving right on into our stat stick as it is pertinent to most everything Gara needs, we actually use the Ceramic Dagger and Karnan for a few reasons. Interestingly, and quite annoyingly, the buffs from Ceramic Dagger's evolutions do carry over to pseudo exalts like Shattered Lash, in this case, that being the 100% increase in melee damage from activating in the Incarnate form and the additive 30% crit chance from its fourth evolution perk. Yes, this means that Shattered Lash can go from 0% crit chance to 30%, making crit builds actually worth it on Lash with mods like Blood Rush and Organ Shatter. Another quite strong buff that Ceramic gives through its second Evo perk Gun and Blade is a permanent 7x combo once you've gotten 100 kills with a secondary or primary in mission. Combo count is very important for her Lash, and this alleviates some of the pressure to maintain it relative to other melees, as unfortunately, hits with Lash do not contribute to your combo counter, so not having to worry about losing all of your damage stacks, mostly, is quite nice. However, building up to the Desire 12x combo can be quite challenging as stacking Splinterstorm leads to enemies dying whenever you approach melee range. To address this, Reflex Guard becomes essential as it allows you to generate combos through blocking, something you can employ anywhere to top yourself back off. Reflex Guard introduces us to the rest of this guard build, so let's explain it. Combat Discipline occupies our aura slot for some very important reasons. Even a single proc of Nourish's Viral Retaliation Wave yields a 100% damage boost for everything in our kit. Activating it does entail taking damage from enemies, yet with Discipline, we can self-trigger this on almost every kill. Given our self-inflicted damage, healing can be done through health orbs dropped by enemies which when used with Equilibrium, double as an energy source. Despite the constant self-damage, employing a Panzer Vulpophila with Synth Fiber ensures easy orb collection even at full health, alongside the obvious viral procs and invulnerability a Panzer boasts. Additionally, Pack Leader will ensure your mini Saren's health stays topped off as damage from Shattered Lash is more than enough to cap it out in one swing. Regarding the energy conversion effect, Nourish will amplify this from Equilibrium as well, rendering it much more convenient to spam her kit. Buffing every single ability massively for Gara's kit is range. Range increases the distance covered by Shattered Lash, the distance or lack thereof there needs to be between you and enemies to hit them with Splinter Storm, the Viral Retaliation Wave, and finally, Vitrify's Explosion Range. In addition, Transient and Umbral Intensify boost our strength to 199, boosting all components of her kit, yet particularly affecting Shattered Lash's damage and the Energy Multiplier from Nourish, which will triple any source at this level. Gara's Augment, Shattered Storm, offers another way we can magnify our damage as it causes Vitrify's explosions to apply Splinter Storm's aforementioned 35% debuff to all afflicted enemies. While the mod's description is quite confusing, this is the true function and it is quite good. On the Arcane front, given our ability to have Lash crit, Arcane Fury can be procced by Lash, giving another 150% melee damage, while our other Arcane links back into Combat Discipline self-damage, giving 45% more flat crit chance to all weapons on doing so. Previously, Avenger and the Adarza Kavat mod were the sole methods of obtaining this buff, however with the advent of Duviri, this dynamic has unmistakably shifted. Nonetheless, this 45% buff remains notably valuable. 
Blood Rush on our stat stick will increase Slash's crit chance to 162%, guaranteeing yellows with a high chance of oranges. The extra 45% provided by Avenger raises this to 207%, giving us guaranteed oranges with a slight chance of reds. Paired with the Gladiator set bonus from Might, and this ends up being a clean 240% crit chance, which is just quite good for this ability. Completing out the rest of the build, prioritize Prime Pressure Point over Conditioned Overload due to the latter's inability to work with Pseudo Exalt, and even though the status chance of Lash still sits at 0%, Corrosive Damage inherently does 75% more damage to units with ferrite armor, a common denominator of Grenier units. Buzzkill and Spoiled Strike represent the highest bonuses we still had available to use, and just to clarify, attack speed positives or negatives have no influence on Lash's performance. Now that we have explored both builds in detail, let's cover some quick housekeeping. For Gara herself, I highly recommend preparation in the Exo slot, as establishing the rotation without the aid of Zenerik can pose challenges, but ultimately the decision for your focus school is up to you. Naramon simplifies the task of maintaining 12x combo, having it gradually decay by only 5 periodically, delayed by the dexterity arcanes if you have them equipped. However, the ceramic dagger automatically facilitates the maintenance of at least 7x combo, and thanks to reflex guard, building back up to 12x can be done quite easily. This makes Xenoric more appealing for energy management, but in reality, any school can be worked with based on your comfort. All of this holds little relevance if you're not accumulating kills using a primary or secondary force Ceramic Dagger's evolution, so to do so, I opt for Torrid, yet you can use anything here. This is just a super safe option, and when paired with Nourish's free viral on a corrosive build, it just wipes. Survivability for Gara is quite easy as both Splinter Storm's 90% DR and Mass Vitrify's instant invulnerability factor into her base gameplay loop, enhancing her overall resilience, and to just make it that much more safe, we can throw shield gating into the mix. Given the frequent casting of Vitrify, its base energy cost of 75 renders it an excellent fit for shield gating, Augur Reach on our frame and two more on this Epitaph Primer build give us 120% energy to shield conversion, more than enough to gate in one cast. Wrapping things up, Gara Prime holds an immense amount of depth and potential with a plethora of ways to play her. Whether you are a newer Tenno or more of a veteran, understanding some of these nuances can make all the difference. So thank you so much for watching, your support really means so much to me, and if you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm just doing my best to make the best content I can for you guys. For those on Patreon and YouTube, your support is also very invaluable. Thank you to Peter, Scotty Nose, Bad Robot, Sage, Rave, Intellectual, SOS, and 3000, and of course, everyone else on screen. And if you are not a member yet, please consider checking out my Patreon and YouTube memberships in the description down below, as it goes a long way in ensuring that I can continue to do all of this. As always, I hope this video was informative and helpful, and I will see all of you guys in the next one. Peace!